So even though a lot of brands have left the mid-size family sedan segment, Kia continues to be going strong with the introduction of the K5 back in 2021. For 2025, it's getting its first major overhaul, and I'm here on the show floor of the 2024 Chicago Auto Show. And now that we're finally seeing the new K5, let's go ahead and take a first look. So one of the things that makes the K5 super unique is the fact that Kia actually offers a performance GT variant. That's the model that I'm showing you here. And the powertrain is actually unchanged for the GT, which is not a bad thing. This is the company's corporate 2.5 liter gasoline direct injection turbocharged four cylinder. It's part of their SmartStream engine family. The numbers are still 290 horsepower and 311 pound feet of torque. This makes it the most powerful, one of the most powerful in terms of the leftover midsize family sedans that you can buy brand new. The downside with this powertrain is it only comes with front wheel drive. Kia sadly does not offer all wheel drive on this powertrain. It goes connected to an eight-speed dual clutch transmission. Again, that is unique to the GT version. Now, the other big story is the fact that Kia has dropped the old 1.6 liter turbo from the base version. So you can still take your pick between either the LXS, the EX, or the GT line. The GT line is available with either front or all wheel drive. The base engine is now basically this motor with the turbo locked, lopped off. So it's a 2.5 liter naturally aspirated four cylinder making 191 horsepower and 180 pound feet of torque. That's an increase of 11 horsepower over the old 1.6, but it does have around six less pound feet of torque. Fuel economy for this engine, Kia hasn't, wasn't ready to talk about final fuel economy figures yet, but the old model did around 27 mpg combined. I suspect the GT version will continue to do the same thing. Uh, this again makes it one of the quickest family sedans you can buy uh, and really gives it an edge over some of the competition. Now, closing the hood, let's go ahead and talk about the refreshed exterior styling. If you guys remember, the K5 was introduced back in 2021. It's essentially the fifth generation version of the Optima. As you guys know, Kia kind of uh, adopted the name that you see in other markets. And for 2025, you can see the front end has been updated. You can see it kind of has this new LED light signature. It has the updated version of the Kia Corporate Tiger Nose Grill with the black accents. The amber illuminated daytime running lights are also very distinctive. You can see they kind of have a different shape to them now where they kind of go into the actual fender. They protrude a little bit more. It gives it more of an aggressive look. Let me know in the comment section below if you guys like the design of this or the pre-refresh model. You can see the GT also includes these functional air intakes. There's no fog lights. I'm sorry, there are fog lights onto the side of the vehicle, and you also have an LED daytime running light and turn signal, which again, I personally think that the K5 is one of the better looking options. In fact, compared to the new Sonata, which also got a refresh in 2024, I personally think that the K5 is the better looking car, but that's always a subjective thing, so let me know in the comment section below what you guys think. Now, moving around the side profile, you can see this thing really does kind of resemble a Kia Stinger. It has that sleek, you know, three box sedan profile, and the K5 is on the larger end. It has a 112 inch long wheelbase. It's around 193 inches long in the overall length. It's a little bit smaller, I believe, however, versus the just introduced Toyota Camry, which again is going to be a big rival. Of course, there's also the new Honda Accord and the Hyundai Sonata. In terms of the wheels, you can see these are the 19 inch wheels that you get that are black finished on the K5 GT. Uh, you can see there's also an acid green brake caliper behind the actual wheels themselves. That kind of matches the acid green that you get on the inside as well. This is riding on a 245 by 40 R19 tire. You have an all independent suspension. Again, what would make this car perfect is all wheel drive, but you can get that on the GT line. You just don't get as much horsepower. You get around 100 less horsepower versus this model here. Now in terms of the rest of the look, you can see black painted side mirrors, which are power folding. You have 360 cameras around. You have this big panoramic glass roof, which again, this looks very upscale. Looking at you know this design here with the black painted roof and the actual panoramic roof really gives this car a more upscale appearance to it. It looks a little bit more like a sporty European sedan as opposed to a Korean mainstream sedan. And then looking at the rear of the vehicle, you can see the design has also been updated. You have a new light signature for the full LED LED tail lights. Uh, it doesn't quite have a full LED light bar that connects the two tail lights together, but you can see there, just like on the front fascia, the actual light signature goes down into the rear quarter panel, which gives it a more distinctive look. There's a GT badge there as opposed to GT line on other trims. And then down here, you can see Kia is one of the few brands that still do a quad outlet exhaust, especially for a family sedan. From the rear here, it really gives it a more European premium sports sedan look. So let me know in the comment section below. I think that the Refresh look actually looks a lot better in the rear versus uh, in the front compared to the previous generation. Now opening up the cargo area, I'm surprised to see that the trunk kind of almost has like a power mechanism. It's technically not power, but it does have the automatic you know, open feature when you push the button. And you can see that's the car cover. There's around 16 cubic feet of storage space back here, which again, it's a sedan. You have the seats that fold down in a 60-40 manner. Obviously, if you need more space, there's a reason why Kia offers the Sportage and other SUVs. But for a sedan, it definitely has a bigger trunk versus some of its rivals. Now moving into the interior of this 2025 K5, I have to say the interior upgrades are subtle, but I, they are effective. Now, 
Once I get in and shut the door, you can see the seats themselves are unique to the GT. You get these kind of acid green accents. The seats themselves are also heated and ventilated. They're slightly more aggressively bolstered, but I'm surprised there's no like GT badge embossed or embroidered into the actual head restraints themselves. But overall, uh, the interior gets an upgrade in terms of the tech department. So all K5s now come standard with a single pane glass display here where you have two 12 inch displays. So you have a 12 inch display here in the instrument panel and a 12.3 inch display here in the center stack. That's up from the 10.25 inch display that you got in the previous generation. And this is now running the latest version of Kia software called CCNC, which means you finally have over the air updates and you finally have wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. That's something that Kia and Hyundai have been needing to add. So it's great to see that Kia has added that into the K5. The rest of the materials back here, you can see you have a soft touch injection molded plastic here. You have two person memory seats. The seats adjust in 12 different ways, which is nice. You have some kind of black plastic trim, which tries to look like aluminum with this kind of textured look. You have a padded armrest here. Window controls pretty feel pretty high quality. Uh, and they're one touch for all four, which is nice. The steering wheel, you can see unique to the GT model where you have the flat bottom design. It has a manual tilt telescoping function with the paddles on the wheel, of course, which is nice. The door panel materials have like kind of a faux stitching here on the, I'm sorry, on the dashboard, where it's also kind of a slightly soft touch area. More of that aluminum look plastic trim is carried over along with the piano black plastic. The also up, the other upgrade here is the fact that you now have that screen for the climate and the audio where you can kind of cycle between the two by pushing a button. Obviously I don't have the key for the vehicle so I can't turn the screen on. I'll have to wait until I get one for a week to test. You can see your wireless phone charging pad is here. There's a traditional shifter uh, for the eight speed dual clutch transmission. You have an electronic parking brake here. You have your actual controls here, physical controls for your heated and ventilated seats. You have a heated steering wheel. Your drive mode selector is here. Padded center console here, which is nice. And if you open this up, you can see there's a storage co a compartment here. Uh, and then you have another USB charging port along with two more over here. So overall the interior is still a really nice place to spend time. It feels a lot more upscale. And I also love the acid grain green stitching. There's also a panoramic sunroof, but I can't open this up. It has a retractable shade. It also opens up to vent. But let's go ahead and hop into the back seat area because this is again where I think Kia's K5 continues to be a good option for people who you know need to actually have people in the back seat. Now, in terms of the legroom space, the legroom on paper isn't great. You have 35 inches of legroom, that's what Kia says, but you can see this is essentially where I have the seat to drive. There's a pretty good amount of space. I can kick back here and get pretty comfortable. I can cross my legs pretty easily. You do have a, a little hump here that intrudes on the middle passenger. You have rear seat air vents. You have two USB-C charging ports. No heated rear seats back here. Uh, and then in terms of the materials, you can see it's a soft touch injection molded plastic with more of that soft stitching area here where you'd rest your elbows. And then over here in the center stack, you can see, or in the center area, you have an armrest that folds down, gives you two cup holders. The headroom space also is not bad. There's kind of like a little carve out area here that gives you more space. But overall, again, if you need a bigger back seat, some competitors offer more space, but this is still pretty class competitive if you're looking for a mid-sized family sedan. So in 2023, Kia managed to sell a little under 65,000 units here in the States. It actually outsold the Sonata by around 25,000 units. So clearly the consumer much prefers the design philosophy of the Kia K5. And after seeing the 2025 model, it's clear that Kia has made some pretty key upgrades here. I think the styling is definitely a subjective thing, but I also like the way it looks a lot more. I like some of the upgrades that Kia has made to the interior, especially with the software. It finally gets wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. I still wish that Kia would offer all wheel drive on the GT version. You'll have to step down to the less powerful GT line to get all-wheel drive and if you guys want a hybrid the Sonata is the only option that gives you a hybrid because Kia does not give you a hybrid option in this model here but basically if you guys are looking to get your hands on the new K5 you're gonna have to wait until this summer because remember this will be a 2025 model and we don't have final pricing just yet but Kia basically says it shouldn't be too far off from the current model which starts at around 26 grand goes up to around just under forty thousand dollars obviously with the increase in tech and features I expect this car to be a little bit more expensive but it also should be priced very competitively against other newcomers like the Toyota Camry and of course the Honda Accord and the Nissan Altima. For Redline Reviews here at the 2024 Chicago Auto Show, I'm Sofian Bain.